This is demonstrating section assembly. I have a very simple draft here. It's a 2212 uh, and plain weave interspersed for a scarf design. So to speed up the, uh, the generation of this, I've got two blocks here. I have a block called section one and section two. One is in pewter, one is in black. For my treadling, I have a twill line and then some plain weave. So the idea is here in my warp, my available sections are section one and section two as defined at locations one to four and five to eight. If I want to, I can rename these sections. Uh, we'll call this the pewter warp. We can call this the black if we want to. Notice when I rename these, it shows up down where they're being used. So previously I had generated this design and I had put, if you notice, I had added a group, only one group. I have done the pewter warp repeated four times, the black eight times, the pewter 11, the black eight, and the pewter four. And that repeat was 140 threads and was a width of 9.3. And we're going to go through this again, but I want to show you first. Uh, let's just show quickly what I have done on this scarf, because this is one I've already woven out of Euroflax. And the same similar situation on the weft. I have two sections. You might notice it's called section seven. Why? Because I had played around with this some and deleted some sections and it just numerically adds. So again, it's nothing to worry about. If I wanted to rename them, I could call this the plain weave section. And this I could call the twill section or I could just leave them at the default section numbers. And in my weft, I had repeated the plain weave once, uh, looks like, and then the twill four times. Okay. And uh, looked like I had defined about 73 inches of weaving for my scarf that way. Now let's take a look at the warp color tabs. I have used color from drawdown. So I'm not going to define a, a special color sequence. Another feature is you can enable color assembly if you want to do some more uh, complex sequencing of color that's not in line with your structure. On weft color, I've done the same thing. I've clicked use color from drawdown. So I can on any of these tabs, there's a go button. And we're going to click go. And it's going to take those instructions and pop up a generated width. So now, according to the number of repeats that I had, you, the warp in the weft is repeated uh, accordingly. Notice the tie up's always the same. So this would be my, my scarf that you can see if you zoom. Very tiny, or that. So let's pretend that I wanted to, now I can close this window, I don't have to save it. And I can go back here again and I'm going to collapse this so I've got a little more, more room to see. If I decide I want to play with those number of repeats, I can do that. Um, let's say in the weft I want to do the plain weave section once and I want to see a little more twill. And I hit refresh, I can see the impact of that. Well now I've got uh, 1,710 threads, I'm at 114, I say, oh, that's too long. I don't want it that long, so I'm going to repeat this section a little less. Do a refresh, now I'm at 93. So that's how you can kind of tweak your, um, maybe I want to do the plain weave uh, four times and see what the impact is and what it looks like. Well, that's too long, so let's do the whole group down, say 30 and see what that does. Still too long. I can move it down to 24 repeats, hit refresh. Just a few more down. Let's see, let's see what it looks like at 20. I'm at 85 inches, so let's go to 18 repeats of that. I do a refresh. Now I'm at 76. Um, so that's the way you can play with this. Now if I hit go, this is what my new 
this graph looks like. And I may say, uh, I'm seeing something a little odd there. I'm seeing those two threads, so I can see what's going on there. Um, and if I look at this, I can see immediately, well, in the, when I did my plane weave section, looks like I made a mistake. Um, I didn't, so I'm going to double click that. And let's just go down to 16 because I had an extra thread there that was causing me not to have plane weave. So now my section's ignoring that number five. So let's hit go again. And now it looks like it's corrected. So very quickly you can make adjustments, see what the impact would be. I'll close that window with a, actually I like to use the uh, control W a lot of times to close a window. So hopefully you can tell that this is a pretty powerful tool. You can have as many sections as you, as you want. You do not have to have them in any particular order. You can have things that you're not using. They don't hurt a thing, such as that lonely uh, weft pick there, which is not being included. And you just hit go to do it. Now, these widths, like on the wharf, I'm seeing the width. Obviously, if I say if I did that, you can tab out, you can hit refresh. The impact of changing that to two repeats means Notice each group is 9.3, but the entire one, once set up, is 18.6. So when you're designing, you can see the width or the lengths of the groups, as well as the entire project that you're getting ready to assemble. So one thing I didn't mention was how does it know the width? It has to know the ends per inch. Those are set under project information on sizing. So this particular project with the Earth Flax 14.2 or the lace weight linen is 15 inches per inch and 15 picks per inch. So again, we can do go again. It generates a final width. And if I decide that this is something I want to keep, I just do simply do file, save as, name it, and I'm done. Um, if I do not want to keep it, just close it. And um, you can go back and make some adjustments and try again.